In this video, I want to show you how to go from the acceleration function to the position function. Now, up to this point, we've started with the position, and we've been able to get the velocity and the acceleration functions by differentiation, and that's you know, fairly straightforward. Uh, the problem is, that's almost never the case. In real uh, applications, we usually start out, we usually get the acceleration first, and then we want to find the position as a function of time. Okay, so to go backwards, uh, or from the opposite of, of differentiation, is anti-differentiation. And so the things we need to know is where here the acceleration function is the derivative of the velocity function. That means that the velocity function is the anti-derivative of the acceleration function. In the same way, if the velocity is the function is the derivative of the position, then the position function is the anti-derivative of the velocity function. And so just sort of a, a reminder of the the uh sort of the the most trivial anti derivatives if I have sort of uh, capital A and small b here constants, if I have some polynomial t to the n, the antiderivative of that is the constant over n plus one that t to the n plus one plus an additive constant. This is sometimes called an arbitrary constant because it can be any constant you want because once you take the differentiate once you the derivative of a constant is zero so you can differentiate this this whole thing and you still get a times t to the n regardless of what this value of c is so by the same token we if we have a to the e to the bt then the antiderivative of that is a over b then e to the bt you differentiate this the b comes down and you get this again you can add any constant to it because the derivative of a constant is zero and you still get this again. Uh, now we're about to find out that the term arbitrary is the wrong uh, word to use. In fact this constant is, often, is not arbitrary at all and it has incredibly important physical meaning and so we'll uh, figure, we'll, we'll find out what that is. Okay, so let's, let's do an example and let's start with uh, some acceleration as a function of time, that's some uh, simple polynomial. We'll call it 2 plus 3 times the time t. Okay, and so if I want to find the antiderivative of that, I just use this formula, and so the velocity in, all along the x-axis as a function of time is equal to 2t plus 3 halves t squared, where I'm just using that expression. Okay, now plus this additive constant. Okay, so I ask the question, okay, so that has physical meaning. So what, what physical meaning is that? So let's, let's ask the following question. What is the initial condition for the velocity function? Remember when we, call, when we uh, defined this before, the initial condition is the velocity at t is equal to zero. We often gave this its own label, uh, v subscript x zero. We called that not v sub x naught. So this this is a uh, physical parameter. It is the velocity of the object at uh, the time is equal to zero. Okay. Well, let's evaluate this thing. So this is equal to the function at so the time, t evaluated at zero, so I plug zero into this expression, that's zero, that's zero, and c. So, in fact, this constant c is, it has physical meaning, it represents the velocity of the object at t is equal to zero. And so the final velocity function that I would write, the full velocity function, is then would be right, I would write that as my vx naught plus 2t plus 3 halves t squared. I put my constant up front, you, you can go anywhere you want. But this is now the correct form of that uh, velocity function. Okay, so let's let's keep going just for practice. We'll we'll do this one more time. And so if I want the position function, it's now the antiderivative of this function. Okay, so that's this this constant, this v sub x naught, the initial velocity uh, times t, the antiderivative. It's a constant. Okay, plus 
Now this is equal to t squared. The antiderivative of 2t is 2t squared over 2. The 2's cancel, I just get t squared. And then now this becomes um, 1 half uh, t cubed. The antiderivative of this is uh, 3 halves t cubed, and then there's a 3 in the denominator, cancels the 3 in the numerator, and I get 1 half t cubed. So there's the antiderivative of, derivative of those three terms, plus then some constant c. Again, this is not an arbitrary constant. We can find out what it is given the initial condition of the system. And so in, in a problem, you, you're, you may be given this number. I have some I have some, some object has this acceleration and at t is equal to zero, it's at a location x equals five and it has a speed of seven uh, meters per second. And so the problem's giving you these initial speed, your initial conditions, the initial speed and the initial position. Okay, so let's, let's evaluate uh, the initial position. We give that its own name, we call that x naught. What it is, is the a position function evaluated at time is equal to zero. And so that's equal to zero, 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 c. <laughs> so again, this constant c is equal to the initial position of the object. It, that's not always true. This constant isn't necessarily always the initial velocity, or in this case, the initial uh, the the initial position, but for these the simple polynomial example that turns out to be true, and so now we can write the full uh, position as a function of time, which is the initial position plus the initial velocity times t plus t squared plus one half t cubed. So uh, going from the acceleration to the position is like going from the position to the acceleration. Uh, one, you do derivatives, and this one you do antiderivatives. The catch is, when you do antiderivatives, for each step, you have an additional additive constant. And to find out what that additive constant is, you have to go to the initial conditions of the system which are what was the velocity at t is equal to zero, what was the position at t is equal to zero. And those initial conditions will then give you the values for those constants.